Hello, I'm Christine Ruther, Delaware County Council, and I get to give the introductory remarks tonight. Uh, thank you to the members of our human services team for holding these hearings. The hearings allow our residents to learn more about the human services block grant and contribute their valuable input on how we can best support our communities and some of our most vulnerable residents. I'd like to thank the director of the county's department of human services and community services, Sandy Garrison, and a few key members of her team who have contributed to uh, the, the community development block grant plan. Angelique hires interim human services director, Gaston Gonzalez, chief financial officer for human services, Janet Dreitline, MH and IDD, which I guess is mental health and individuals, individuals that develop mental disabilities administrator, Donna Holliday, mental health deputy administrator, Alicia Redden Rebel, OIDD deputy administrator, Pam Bell, drug and alcohol administrator, Jessica Fink, adult and family services administrator, Jackie Hartney, fiscal officer, human services, Vandy Mossere, fiscal officer, human services, Warner Williams, accountant, human services, and our mental health and uh, individuals with developmental disabilities and the drug and alcohol advisory boards. That's a slide, so you will probably see the whole thing again. Uh, it's through your hard work and dedication that these grants are available to help some of our most vulnerable residents. Some of you may not know what human services block grants are, so I'll briefly give you some background. The human services block grant was initiated in 2012 through Act 80 and allowed 20 counties, including Delaware County, to enter into pilot programs. Funding for some of the human services programs, such as mental health, intellectual and developmental disabilities, drug and alcohol, adult services, and children and youth services were combined, which permitted counties to allot the funds based on service needs. Unused monies, currently up to 5% of the overall allocation, can be maintained by the county if not expended during the fiscal year and used for future needs outlined in the retained earnings plan. The Human Services Block Grant allows the county to fund some services to individuals who are homeless, have intellectual and developmental disabilities, mental health or drug or alcohol use disorders. Block grant dollars are utilized for individuals who may not have funding from any other source, such as medical assistance. Delaware County's human service model placed us in an optimal position for funding this approach. The human services block grant has been very beneficial for us, and you will hear more about it during this presentation. This public meeting also allows us to receive feedback from stakeholders regarding the service needs and services provided by the county. Counties in their leadership role are required to identify local needs, develop goals, create strategies, and identify and track outcomes that support the implementation of quality, cost-effective, and efficient services. Counties are responsible to complete the planning process and submit the required plan, which describes how services are delivered in the areas of mental health, intellectual disabilities, and home homeless assistance, substance use disorders, and other human services. The plan should also describe coordination and cooperation with other critical services not directly administered by the county government. Additionally, we will be discussing the strides we've made during the fiscal year 2022 and 2023 and our goals for the upcoming year. I'd now like to introduce the director of the county's Department of Human Services and Community Services, Sandy Garrison. Thank you, Councilman Ruther. And thank you everybody for coming to the public hearing for the Human Services Block Grant. This is the second of the two hearings we must hold to talk about. Better? better. A little bit. It's on. Is that better? Okay. Um, this is the second of two hearings we have to hold to discuss our plans for the upcoming fiscal year, as well as to talk about what we've done over the past year. Am I always in a said this later in the presentation last week, but I always get amazed as we're kind of, when everything's combined in one hour presentation of what we've done. Um, we have a lot of things that we've accomplished um, and a lot of goals we've set for next year. So with that, I will turn it over to Ms. Hires, who is the Interim Human Services Director. Hello, I'm Angelique Hires. I'm the Interim Human Service Director for Delaware County. And the Human Services mission statement is, 
Delaware County Human Services is committed to addressing the social service needs of county residents in an inclusive and equitable manner with a holistic, trauma-informed, culturally competent, financially fiscally responsible approach designed to meet the statutory mandates of the respective program offices. And our mission statement for, that's our mission statement, but our human service racial equity statement reads, the Delaware County Department of Human Services acknowledges and understands historical and ongoing systematic racism exists in our work environment, racialized practices and behaviors which result in disparities and inequities within our department will not be allowed to continue and must change. The department's goal is to create an organizational culture of inclusion and equitable success for the unique voices of all are valued, thereby bringing demonstrated diversity and creativity to our workplace and services provided. Good evening, everyone. I'm Janet Dreitlein. I'm the mental health and ID, IDD administrator for Delaware County Department of Human Services. Uh, the mental health mission and vision statements are the Delaware County Department of Human Services Mental Health Office's mission is to assure the provision of a comprehensive array of quality mental health services and supports for eligible adults and children that will assist participants in maximizing autonomy, independence, and self-determination. We do this by collaborating with as many adults, families, systems, and providers as possible to identify individuals who are in need of mental health services. We strive to educate all of our stakeholders and our systems partners regarding the need for and the delivery of culturally competent, trauma-informed, and evidence-based services. Good evening. My name is Jessica Fink. I'm the Adult Family Services Administrator. Adult and Family Services oversees a wide range of community services to families and adults in Delaware County. Adult and Family Services is responsible for the oversight of contracted services that fall under the continuum of care for homeless programs, including homeless prevention, emergency shelter, and permanent housing. We also provide contractual oversight for food assistance programs, medical assistance, transportation, and a variety of other supportive services. Adult and Family Services supports agencies through ongoing education and the provision of tools to ensure equity in their services to assist families and adults in leading safe, healthy, and productive lives that break the, the cycle of homelessness. Families and adults will, will receive equitable, trauma-informed and outcome-focused services from provider agencies. Good evening, my name is Alicia redden Ravel. I'm the Deputy Administrator for IDD Services. The mission of the IDD Department is the mission of Delaware County Office of Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities is to advance the health, welfare, rights, independence, and community inclusion of children and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and or autism spectrum disorder in Delaware County. We envision a community that includes people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and or autism spectrum as full members of society who self-determine to the greatest extent possible, visualizing fulfilling lives and utilize natural and paid supports as necessary as a part of a meaningful life. So I will be filling in for um, uh, drug and alcohol this evening because our drug and alcohol administrator was not able to join us. So the mission of the drug and alcohol uh, department, the mission of Delaware County single county authority is to assure the provision of a comprehensive array of quality alcohol and other drug services for eligible children and adults that will assist them to maximize their human potential. Who are we? The Office of Drug and Alcohol is an administrative office that oversees the delivery of treatment and prevention services in Delaware County. The Division of Drug and Alcohol Programs provides funding for prevention, intervention, and treatment services to all eligible Delaware County children, adults, and families. Good 
just a little bit of a background on the Human Services Block Grant. I know Councilman Ruther had talked briefly about it at her opening remarks. And the Block Grant was initiated in fiscal year 2012-2013 with Act 80. Delaware County was one of the 20 pilot counties in the program. Um, as discussed, because of the structure we had where we all the Human Services offices reported to a single director and we had the fiscal and information technology, information systems and contracts and so forth as a separate administrative office within the department, we were in an optimal position to initiate this block grant because we already were doing a lot of the collaborating within our internal structure. Um, the categoricals, as we discussed, that are included are mental health, intellectual and developmental disabilities, um, a portion of drug and alcohol, and also the homeless services for the county. I would just like to thank again our planning team, as Councilwoman Ruther noted, all the human service staff, and also our stakeholders, which include Children's Cabinet and Coalition, MHDD Advisory Board, DNA Planning Council, the Delaware County Advocacy and Resource Organization, NAMI, Voices and Vision, Partners for Success Coalition, Police Departments, the Delaware County Treatment Court Teams, the Delaware County Anti-Trafficking Coalition, the Adult and Family Services, Drug and Alcohol, IDD and MH Providers, Community Support Programs, Compeer, Homeless Services Coalition, Community Care Behavioral Health, Empowerment Forum, Delco Co Collaboration, ODP, OMSAS, and Field Offices, the Springfield Pro Cares Coalition, OIDD Families and Participants, Directed Services, District Justices, and Delaware County School Administrators. And looking back over the life of the block grant, one of the things that really sticks out is the flexibility it has allowed us as a county to have with our funding. Prior to the block grant, what would happen is if we received funding for a categorical, say, mental health, and didn't expend all those dollars, it would go back to the state and then be re reallocated as seen fit by the state. The block grant took all the funding, put it together in one pot, and allows the county to make a discretion, make decisions on how to use those funds based on the need at the time. Um, for example, initially when the block grant was initiated, our drug and alcohol system was historically underfunded. So we were able to keep that system open, whereas in the past we had, had shut the system down at different points during the year because we didn't have adequate funds. Um, with the passing of the Medicaid expansion through Obamacare, we then did have funding to, for individuals that weren't otherwise covered by insurance. And we were able to have those individuals funded through a different mechanism. And then the block grant monies that we had that we didn't need, we were able to shift to intellectual developmental disabilities, which also at that point had a huge need. And we are able to maintain 5% uh, funding to carry over year to year to use for a plan that we feel is the best interest of the county. Some of the things we've done is we've had homeless services initiated. Um, we've had um, rental assistance program. Um, most recently, we also assisted providers in maintaining staff by providing a recruit, recruitment and retention uh, stipend for different providers to maintain their front, front line staff. Um, specifically in fiscal year 21 to 22, um, some of the things we've accomplished is we are continuing our collaboration within our, in the department as well as within the county agencies, um, especially the criminal justice and juvenile justice systems. Um, we also did a lot of work in identifying providers to cover the gap that was left by prospects announcement of a de departure from our county. Um, we continued the unpacking systemic racism projects, as well as successfully transitioned to our new behavior health managed care organization, which is community care, and they started on July 1st. Um, we worked with um, providers to make sure they're hiring and training their appropriate staff, as well as retaining those staff. Um, and also we worked on a remote work policy. Um, we in, additionally, excuse me, um, we were able to allocate through collaboration with other county offices, such as the solicitor and the controller's office and the treasurer's, um, over $60 million in federal emergency rental assistance. Um, we also combined our services with the county office of services for the aging, workforce development, health department, housing and community development, and veterans affairs, as well as the juvenile detention services, because we realized that individuals that are served by one of these systems frequently touch multiple systems. Um, the Healthy Kids Healthy Schools Initiative began last year. Um, that was in conjunction with the district attorney's office and to, deal, to assist school districts in dealing with children that do struggle with mental health and or substance use issues while attending school. We have the statistics data and quality office within human services that we formed, and that's gonna help us make data-driven decisions 
regarding contracting, programming, and so forth. Um, and finally, one of the other big things we did was the no wrong door policy. We've had always had a no wrong door policy, but we're starting to implement it on a broader scale. So at what, whatever point someone touches our system, they're automatically directed to the appropriate office within our department. So with that, I will turn it over to Janet to talk more about drug and alcohol. Um, so Excuse me, law enforcement diversion to treatment programs, housing and housing focused case management for those who have opiate use disorder and stimulant use disorder, site based medication assisted treatment expansion and recovery support. <coughs> Excuse me, at George Hill Correctional Facility, Narcan distribution and prevention initiatives. Moving on to mental health accomplishments, um, we were able to enhance our provider network to develop new services and expand on multiple services. Um, we were successfully able to reintegrate individuals living at state hospital back into the community into living arrangements that uh, supported their needs. We provided um, peer support training and a graduation. We received an award, our third award, um, for a four-year system of care grant. We received an award for two community mental health services block grants, and those funds will be utilized to um, develop a long-term structured residence and also to enhance our mobile crisis uh, units. Um, we had the continuation of the trauma-informed care trainings, continuation of youth mental health first aid trainings, and we provided crisis intervention training graduation to uh, many of our first responders. Um, we also sponsored adult and children mental health awareness initiatives and activities. Um, we were selected to participate in the Stonely Foundation multi-system pilot program. Um, this is a really interesting program. As Sandy said, we know that uh, for the most part in human services, if a, if a child um, touches one department, they likely touch other departments. So this is an opportunity for us to look at how we um, work with and provide service to multi-system youth and to learn an, a new um, process and to align our policies and procedures so that we can better, uh, so better serve those youth and more consistently align with our practices. Um, staff continue to connect with providers regularly to, de to deliver support for the provision of quality behavioral health services to all Delaware County residences, residents. Um, staff worked a higher hybrid schedule, efficiently managing priorities. Um, trainings have been provided in a virtual platform as well as in person. The provider network uh, development of new services and expansion of multiple services. And I will hand it over to Alicia for intellectual and developmental disabilities. The accomplishments for the intellectual and developmental disabilities. We have decreased the use of base funding for long-term residential placement and increased the use of waiver for community services by addressing the PONS list. Working closely with the Office of Developmental Programs to attain approval to utilize temporary staffing to ensure that supports coordination organization services were consistently provided during a time of the staffing shortages. Uh, 
help distribute masks and information to individuals and families, including information on accessing vaccinations, working with the Office of Developmental Programs and Delaware County Emergency Management Services to access community vaccine clinics and vaccines for homebound individuals and families. Work with providers to ensure all safety protocols were followed and decrease the risk of individual infection with the COVID-19 uh, virus. Monitored weekly COVID cases per provider agency and deliver supports as needed. Help to ensure that all providers had access to vaccines and to protect the individuals as well as the staff. Serve 110 individuals and the family support services allocation of the community living waiver to address and enhance supports needed for 21 individuals, successful allocation of funds to families from the American Rescue Act American Rescue Plan Act to support respite and family driven support services needed. Successful allocation of funds to all Office of Developmental Program providers to address staff recruitment, retention, and COVID related staff expenses. We met frequently with providers just to make sure that our protocols were effective. Um, connecting with individuals and families weekly to ensure that their safety and to assess needs. Provided in person and and virtual services to individuals and families to address any immediate and ongoing concerns. Supported providers as they reopen to have in-person services. Working collaboratively with the county, providers and families to ensure individuals and the staff had access to vaccines timely. Um, and again, working with providers to enhance and add new services to address emergency and new needs within the programs and work with the Office of Developmental Programs to develop a pilot program to utilize temporary staff. Thank you. The accomplishments for adult and family services. Uh, COVID related funding was secured through the Office of Housing and Community Development that allowed 204 households to be temporarily sheltered in motels on code blue nights and that those code blue nights are November 1st through April 1st when the temperature was 32 degrees or cooler. The outreach team identified 135 persons for services since their start November 2020. 61 persons have been um, engaged this fiscal year. The outreach team provides active outreach services five days per week to the areas frequented by the homeless population and are on call. They can be reached by a number. Um, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. 93 households moved into rapid rehousing or permanent supportive housing during the fiscal year of 21-22. Additionally, 46 emergency housing vouchers were made available to the homeless population. 10 of those 46 vouchers were uh, provided to the domestic violence um, survivors. Uh, despite shelter uh, capacity, reduced shelter capacity, um, we had to reduce it due to social distancing. More than 550 individuals were provided shelter July 1st, 21 through June 30th of 2022. Shelters remained open during the COVID-19 pandemic at a reduced capacity as mentioned above. Despite the pandemic, the outreach team and volunteers were able to conduct the point in time count required by housing and urban development. 46 persons were identified as homeless um, on the point in time count night um, and offered resources and shelter if they were interested. The outreach team continued to engage street homeless persons and transport to shelters when requested. The county organized food drives um, were continued through December 2021, largely uh, to assist independent pantries. And lastly, uh, the SHARE Food Program completed their first year as the food provider for Delaware County and has increased the food access to areas previously underserved. Like I said earlier, I think there was a lot of things that were accomplished by human services during the past fiscal year. Um, I just get amazed each time as we go through all the list of everything that was actually done, considering it was a pandemic, considering the staffing crisis across the country pretty much. Um, there's just been a lot of things that have been accomplished and I really thank human services staff, the providers and the community. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank County Council for their support as well. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Hires again to talk about what we look to do in the upcoming fiscal year. 
Right. We're excited going into the new year and we plan to continue our collaborations with all the county human services departments and all the departments within the county because we've learned the more we do together, the better we serve everyone. But also we're implementing a racial equity plan. We're enhancing awareness of services within the community, which will be more outreach, more resource for hairs, more announcements publicly of what we do, because most people don't know about us until they have a problem. We want that to stop. We want people to come to us aware that there's something they're in need of, and we kind of can direct them to wherever that's the best fit. And a lot of times it shouldn't be under a stressful situation that they do show up at our door. But when they show up, we should be readily available to service them in any way possible, and they should be comfortable doing that on an ongoing basis. So we hope that expanding our um, awareness in the community of what's needed, but also where we are and what we can do will help that be a positive exchange of information and a positive relationship building situation. Because right now it's not always in the best situation when people come to us in distress. And we don't want that to be the case ongoing. We also want to expand our partnership with county criminal justice and juvenile justice systems. We want to increase our staff retention because we're working hard to do that by working on um, salaries and hiring because we know it's a great need for that. Um, and we are losing some of our senior staff because of retirements and things. And we just need to build on the, the knowledge that we have, but also in terms of our ability to attract um, high quality new staff. We want to evaluate providers and programmatic policies on a comprehensive basis with our statistics and data and quality unit. And we're also gonna create a database to collect information from all contacts that come to our office so we can figure out what the needs are and how to address them. And we're also going to be utilizing the existing No Wrong Door and One Health, One Welfare philosophies to maintain comp cohesive and comprehensive approaches to our services. I'm gonna pass it on to Janet for drug and alcohol. The Drug and Alcohol Department <clears throat> goals for the coming year are prevention, to continue to meet audiences where they are by being creative and, and adapting both virtually and in person and shifted uh, the countywide Drug and Alcohol Prevention Coalition <clears throat> to increase capacity planning, implementation and sustainability. They will be working toward their uh, year two of their um, treatment needs assessment plan, five-year plan, outlined priorities to address identified needs, gaps, and barriers. Priorities continue to include lack of transportation to treatment and recovery supports, language barriers and lack of interpreter services, warm handoff issues, lack of available social and recreational alternatives, and workforce issues. Two new anchor providers have been added to the county, county listing. Um, MVP and American Treatment Network. MVP is is an experienced provider who has a lengthy history in Delaware County, an American Treatment Network who is new to Delaware County area, and their program is equipped to provide comprehensive continuation of care for the community. Moving on to mental health priorities, um, we will continue to work uh, cautiously and carefully to um, reopen mental health treatment and recovery services in Delaware County. Uh, we'll continue to support the use of telehealth services to, to, to the degree that that is clinically appropriate. Um, we're gonna provide trauma and culturally informed post pandemic resources to the Delaware County stakeholders. Um, <clears throat> we will continue as we move forward with our services to use quality planning, quality assurance, quality control and quality improvement to achieve new program development and changes to improve the continuum of mental health services in the county. We'll continue to identify potential provi providers to diversify, decrease, decrease wait lists, and afford more choice. Um, and we will be implementing a mobile crisis for law enforcement grant through the Congressional Directive funding. And I'll turn it over to Alicia. Okay. Intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, moving forward, we would like to continue to support our families and individuals with their everyday life utilizing the life course tools. In conjunction with the Office of Developmental Programs, local, local counties and service providers restore and or modify programs to serve their displaced by the changing by the change in traditional day programs and community participation supports, provide a minimum of four direct trainings and resources to to families to reduce risk, improve health, promote vaccines, understand service options, and improve understanding of paperwork processes. 
conduct a satisfaction survey to identify systemic issues and create a plan to address those, those issues. Increase opportunities for medically complex children to be supported in the community in non-congregate settings. To support the transition process for incarcerated individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities to live successfully in the community. And finally, to develop additional data collection processes to allow for the effective and efficient provision of services. I'll pass it over to Jessica. Uh, Dalton Family Services will continue to work on reducing the number of households become, who become homeless. Uh, we will also continue to reduce the length of time the households remain homeless, so to try to get them um, back into housing as quickly as possible, um, and to transition households from emergency shelter or rapid rehousing into permanent housing programs whenever possible. Oh, my name is Gaston Gonzalez, uh, Human Services Chief Financial Officer. Uh, the fiscal impact of the Human Services Program for fiscal year 22-23 um, is 46.4 million, which represents a flood increase from prior year of uh, 0.57 percent. And this budget is allocated in, this, in the different uh, categorical services like mental health, uh, 35.2 million, which represents a 75.8 percentage of the total low grant um, funds intellectual and developmental disabilities, 7.8 million, which represents 16.9%. Drug and alcohol, 1.9 million, which represents 4.2%. Homeless assistance, that is uh, 930,000, which represents 2%, and human services development funds, which is 510,000, which represents 1.1% of the total allocation of the budget. And I will pass it on to Sandy. Thank you. Um, just to reiterate our commitment, um, Delaware County Human Services is committed to addressing the social service needs of our county residents in an inclusive and equitable manner with a holistic, trauma-informed, cultural competent, fiscally responsible approach designed to meet the needs of the statutory mandates of the respective program offices included within the block grant. Um, before opening this up to questions, I again just want to thank Human Services staff none of this could be done. It's more than the people that are sitting up here before you. It's the all 425 roughly staff and human services that make these things happen. Um, I also wanna thank again, County Council for their support and acknowledged by our Vice Chair um, Schaefer who was on, on the video as well. Um, not only do they support what human services does on a daily basis, I just really need to acknowledge everything that happened with Prospect and they were in the weeds with all of us trying to come up with a plan. And I know I've, I myself appreciate that. And I know our um, department does as well. Um, us are the providers in the community, again, with everything that happened and coming up with plans, the providers stepped up and we're willing to take on additional programs. And the community as a whole, everybody kind of band together to figure out how we can best meet the needs of everybody. Um, so with that, I will open it up. If anybody has any questions, you come up and state your name at the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry, an address. Tell you about my predicament. My name is Dorothea Klopinski, and I'm the mother and caretaker of a 50 year old daughter who is developmentally disabled. She has Down syndrome. She has been a client of Elwin over 46 years, first in the Davidson School and then in the workshop program. Elwin suddenly, with barely a few days' notice, closed all the work activity programs for clients living at home. There are still programs for people who live in institutions, like uh, many with elderly parents and some of them living with family members, parents are deceased. Uh, siblings who may have not anticipated taking another family member in with them. We're extremely worried about the future of this vulnerable population. They are left to fend of themselves without a structured, meaningful day program. The Bridgewater workshop where my daughter was gave clients a purpose that provided work as well as companionship. It is my hope that a purposeful and safe day program could be implemented in Delaware County for the probably over 200 plus clients left without a place to go daily. This leads to further emotional and mental decline if they're left to just sit at home. 
working in the community is often, very often, not a suitable option for many of those who were in the workshop, if you were to go there and visit the workshop, such as suitability of jobs to their abilities as well as, as, well as to their disabilities. A daycare program is also not is what needed. We don't want them just playing games and playing bingo. Another concern of mine and to many elderly parents and siblings is further care and living arrangements for a growing older population since many of us have raised our children at home. And uh, with today's medical science, our children are outliving their parents, which many of them didn't in the past. And we are very worried about their future. And thank you for hearing my concerns. Thank you. Um, I will make a few comments and pass it over to the rest of the team member. Team members, if they have anything additional to add. Um, I appreciate your concerns. I know this is an issue that the count, county is aware of. Um, we have set up a meeting, I believe it's next week, to meet with family members to talk about what makes sense as far as a plan of what you guys would like to see you know, the county move forward with. Um, we also are gonna work with providers to develop the programs. Um, this obviously is different than the previous issue we encountered with prospect to agree, but I will say we learned from that, that a lot of providers in the community are more than willing to develop additional programs um, and work with us to best serve the residents in our county. Um, I don't know if anybody else from Human Services would like to comment. I just wanted to say thank you for coming forward and just sharing um, what you're experiencing as well with a lot of the other families. Um, we are aware of the situation that is happening with Elwyn, and we have talked with a lot of our other providers just to see if they can expand their capacity to be able to take on some additional individuals. So our meeting on next week, we'll be sharing some resources with the families at that time and then provide some additional instructions for planning and moving forward. So I hope Hopefully you will be able to attend next week and then we can share some additional information with you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? <clears throat> Good evening, Carol Kazim. Um, I just, the slide went a little fat. You have to give your phone name and address, please. Oh, okay, sorry. Carol Kazim, 327 East 23rd Street, Chester, PA. Um, I just wanted to ask, what was the total? It kind of moved a little quick on the slide. The, oh. Okay. There was a total amount before you guys gave it. The, okay. And then the second question, thank you. I got it. And then the second question is, I know that, um, when I saw the breakdown, majority of the funds were going towards like the mental health piece, correct? Yes. Okay. So when you guys do allocate that, is that going directly more to like um, organizations and, you know, the county? Like how is the county going to disperse that? The numbers we use in the slides here are actually based on the allocation from the state, the categorical allocations, like historical ones. So okay. the funding then as we go through the year and different needs come up, we can we shift the funding obviously with county council's approval to providers and programming that best suits the needs of the county at that moment. Um, I will say the majority of our funds, and I unfortunately don't have it off the top of my head, but I want to say probably close to 80, if not more percent, actually is directly passed through to providers to provide the services because most of the services are done by other agencies, not the county itself. Um, the balance of it's used for administrative costs, salaries, benefits, um, operation, operating expenses, as well as some of the county indirect costs. But the majority of the funds do get passed through to providers to actually provide the services in the community. Okay, and the last question, if an organization does provide any of these services, they can then reach out to who exactly? Is it the county council or is it the Department of Human Services to receive funding behind that? Sure, on the Human Services website, I believe there is a link. If there isn't, there's an email at least. Okay. There used to be a link to express an interest. We were willing to contract with any provider that has a service that's licensed okay. um, and that fits into the programming that we can fund. 
Um, so definitely, if you know of a provider that has an interest in doing a service that falls into this, or even any of the programming within human services, not just the block grant. So for example, we have children and youth, we have right. um, some of the other programming. Reach out, we definitely will have somebody contact you okay. and talk about your program or the program that you're aware of, okay. and then look at how we can best partner to make sure that we can bring you into our network. because. We typically, for most of the services, will contract with any provider that offers the service, again, that's licensed, to give the individuals in the community a choice as to who they would like to work with. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That's all. Thank you. Are there any other questions anybody has? I, yeah, I know I have the two here that were emailed in. Um, the first one is, um, I am first and foremost a family member of a person with a mental illness, and I represent my chapter of NAMI in Delaware County. I would like to say that accessibility to housing, there seems to be a great need, especially for the seriously mental, mentally ill that needs supervision. Also, the mental health services that are in Delaware County are not always accessible, especially to those who have been new to mental health conditions needs. Doctors and therapists seem to be hardest to access. These are my most important concerns for the mental health population of Delaware County. This is from Shirley Gallagher, the president of NAMI Delaware County. Um, again, before turning over to the rest of the team, just a few comments. I know we did have a housing coalition meeting, or excuse me, a housing roundtable meeting with county stakeholders this afternoon um, prior to this meeting, just to talk about the housing issue, because we know it is a concern. Um, and additionally, with the mental health services, we are looking for additional providers. Um, and I, we realize that it is a challenge and we realize there are wait lists for many of the programming. So with that, I don't know if Jessica or Janet or anybody else has anything else they'd like to add to that. Um, I can also add that <clears throat> in mental health, we are in the process of developing a long-term structured residence to support individuals that do need um, more um, long-term support and ultimately would potentially be able to live in the community, but at the moment are not able. We are also going to be developing a transitional aged youth residential program for um, individuals that are not quite yet ready to live on their own, most of which are coming out of a children's residential treatment facility. Um, both of those programs, <clears throat> excuse me, we're hoping to have up um, uh, uh, this year, um, fingers crossed, if we can locate a place for them. So those are at least two items that, that um, should be increasing the ability for us to provide housing for individuals with mental health. I can add that um, we do house persons with um, mental illness that uh, need housing. However, our, fund, our programs that fund those housing programs are through HUD, Housing and Urban Development, and HUD put housing and urban development puts restrictions on it. So you have to be street homeless or shelter homeless. So what we tend to find is that people are living with family members and those persons, we could not move directly into those HUD funded programs. So they are out there, they are limited. It, the need far exceeds the available um, housing slots, unfortunately. You know, I, I would just like to make one comment more as an observer than anything else, because I sit here as a member of county council. And um, while I certainly appreciate the uh, the level of information that we get and the opportunity to share ideas and, and to help advocate for the work that our human services departments do, um, as difficult as the situation with Prospect and with Elwyn, you know, has been. Uh, one encouraging thing that I take away from it is the county as a whole, I think, has, has always relied on the solutions that always worked before. And we're not alone in that. I mean, we all do that. You know, you keep going to the same plumber and the same dentist and the same hairdresser because you, they do a good job and you like them. Um, and then something happens and, you know, your plumber retires and your hairdresser, you know, moves away. and. Um, gosh, nothing makes you panic more. But um, in this case, I think what the county has learned in a number of different situations is that we've been highly dependent on a very small number of vendors. And it's, you know, it is what it, it, I hate the expression, but it is what it is. It's sort of what we came into and it's just the, been the pattern of practice. And 
the good news about these situations is that um, kind of all at once, you know, the county has really uh, thrown its doors wide open and done something that maybe other counties did before. And that is making it clear to people that we really are open to working with all of you, that we wanna give our residents a choice, that we wanna make sure that we are contracting with everybody who's interested in contracting with us. And you know, not every provider is interested in contact contracting with the county, but if you have a particularly good one, um, please reach out and let us know who they are, especially when it comes to mental and behavioral health, where the needs are so much greater than the resources uh, available. And I'm not, it, 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 oddly enough, it's not even the money, it's finding the people and the staff willing to do the service. So if you've got somebody who's good, and let us know. You know, we can talk to them and find out whether there are uh, there's a basis under which they can work with the county because we want to make that service available. Thank you. The last question I have, unless we receive more, is my name is Tawilla Francis. I live at 408 Harrison Avenue, Glen Olden, PA. What direct steps of accountability will be taken by this administration with Delco OBH to lessen wait times for CRR admissions? How can inpatient psych, OBH, and outpatient services work together to find an appropriate, appropriate placement within a month or less? Since step-down facilities such as Natal and Carroll's Place don't accept Delco residents without an address, can you change that cr criteria to decrease, decrease hospitalizations and increase stabili stabilization? Please advise. I think we are kind of to piggyback on what Councilman Luther said, we are looking at alternative providers in the community to see what services we can initiate. So unfortunately, some of the re residency requirements and we're doing the best we can to work with them are not set by Delaware County. They'll set, they're set by some of our federal funding streams. Um, however, when it is set by Delaware County, we are seeing we are seeing what services we can initiate and how we can expedite getting individuals into programming. We're also looking across the board as this speaks to mental health, but just the services we currently have. Many of the programs we have, quite honestly, were developed years ago, decades ago, and they were developed appropriately at that time. But obviously, like everything else, the community has changed. Individuals coming in services have changed. And we're taking a hard look at that to say, you know, are these programs exactly what's needed now? And if not, what can be done to make them more work better with the community that is now we're now facing as a county. Um, and again, I don't know if Janet or anybody else would like to add anything to that. Okay. Are there any other questions? Only because I heard the comment, Carol, because I'm 327. Okay. Uh, because I heard the um, comment regarding like the homeless assistance and like what's required. Um, just a comment and a question. What I found um, pretty much more often is that a lot of people, especially mothers, are finding themselves staying more with friends, um, but are really considered homeless. And I guess for them, it's like they have no choice but to stay with a friend because if they are known to be out on the street, then of course, DHS sometimes get involved. And I don't know, like, how would that, how would you guys balance that where if they are not able to have any more space, like just say prime example, the Wesley House and the uh, um, hotels that sometimes community action use is also not available or they have too many people being um, housed there. What kind of, like, how do we basically balance and transition them to be able to get them to still get that kind of voucher or support if they have no choice, but to maybe stay at a friend's home because of, them, you know, being a mother or a father, it's not even just moms too, but dads or grandparents. So I don't, I don't know, like, if there's a way that we can maybe see about like the criteria or is that open at least? Um, I will say specifically, I know because you commented about um, DHS or Tony use or Child Protective Services. Child Services. Right. And no, no I, but I know in our county, one of the programs that was initiated several years ago. Um, by our children youth services office was they have the family management center, which is a shelter that houses specifically houses families. And I hear what you're saying. There's not the room for the need all the time, mm -hmm. but I can say that we've never as a county to this day placed a child just because of housing issues with the 
parent or caregiver. Um, so we do try to work with the families and keep them in the community, especially when there's children involved. And there is funding, and Jess can talk a little bit about there's funding through adult and family services, but there's also housing monies available through children and youth services as well to okay. do the hotel program, the transitional living, um, if the shelter beds aren't available. So I will say we will work with individuals to get them in a more stable situation. Um, and I know I should say no. I think the perception a lot of times is that children and youth wants to just come in and take children. Yeah. We would prefer to keep kids in the community, quite frankly, because that's where they deserve to be. They need to be with their family members. Um, so we do what we can to maintain children in homes um, to assist families with getting, you know, the resources they need to have a place to live. So I don't know, Jess, if you want to have any anything additional. I think you did a great job um, with your response. Um, yes, yeah, so families that are in need of shelter services should go to Community Action Agency and get the assessment. And I will say that the first thing that they will do is ask if you have somewhere else to stay because the funds for motel or, or shelter are so limited. However, right. if it gets to the point that that family member says you can no longer stay here, then what I suggest is that that family member writes a letter that says, Mary and her family have been staying here and due to my lease, due to overcrowding, due to whatever, can no longer stay and take that letter back to Community Action Agency. And at that point, then shelter should be initiated. And if it's not, then um, you're always welcome to contact the county, contact um, at my office, Adult and Family Services, and we are certainly happy to try to figure out what went wrong. Mm -hmm. The unfortunate thing is the funds that are used for um, for uh, the housing programs, they are um, HUD funded, housing and urban right. development funded. So to go into a rapid rehousing program, we have no choice. It's either you're on a street or in a shelter. So we do on occasion get people that say, I'm not going in a shelter. I will sleep in my car. Children can't sleep in a car. Adults, we've had sleep in a car. As long as we're able to document that that person is sleeping in the car, then we're able to then put that person into housing. We used to have a program called Home at Last. It was a program through Crozier. I'm not sure what the fate of that program is going to be, but they used to do outreach and were able to help document people living on the street. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, for the most of the programs, it is required that they're going to, a person will need to end up in shelter like a family would. Single adults, we have a little more leeway, but we can't let families live on the street. Okay. Does that Thank answer you. your Yeah, it does. Yeah. Thank you. And you're always welcome to, like I said, reach out to our office because mm -hmm. we do run interference between, you know, a person who's saying I'm not getting the services I deserve and CAA that says, you know, well, we don't have space or whatever. Well, mm -hmm. a family should never be sleeping in a car on a street. Kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. And just to tag in a little bit to that, it's a little bit off topic, but we do have the emergency rental assistance program that so if someone is at the point where they think they, they're facing eviction, be, and they've been impacted because of COVID, please reach out to the Emergency Rental Assistance Program. Um, it's Delco ERI is the website and apply for that assistance as well. And additionally, if individuals are looked, they are, there is the availability to use those funds to secure an apartment. So if the individual, and I know it's not easy to find apartments right now, but if the individual is a, does have an apartment and it's just a matter of, you know, I can do this, but I need assistance with the first and last month's rent or whatever the landlord's requiring, please reach out and see if there's, you know, a way we can assist. And there's the human services website for anybody who's, who's not just here, but online listening, the email address, those emails do get answered. And if it's a matter of, I'm not really sure who can help, but this is my situation, please reach out because we'll then direct it to individuals within human services. And frequently, if, when I receive it, I'll direct it like three different people and say, okay, someone reach out and figure out who the best office to serve this individual is. Yep. Are there any other comments or questions from anybody that's here? Okay. Is there anything else online? Okay. I will turn it back over to Councilman Mueller for closing remarks. They didn't give me a script for the closing remarks. Um, I would just like to say thank you to all of our county employees who work in the Department of Human Services. It has been a tremendously challenging um, two and a half years, uh, really almost since uh, right after we took office, we were hit with the pandemic. And I know as a parent, and I know as an individual um, that it has taken a toll. 
it's taken a toll on our families. It's taken a toll on us as, as workers and as employees and as public servants. And um, it has made finding the kinds of resources that we need to supplement um, our, our workers and or even to fill vacancies uh, extremely difficult. You know, there are a lot of people left the workforce, a lot of people who are in the caring professions, which includes social workers, um, therapists, and people who frontline deal with families and individuals in crisis. It has made that work that much harder and has led to a rate of burnout that we are not alone in experiencing. And, you know, we're also a county that's been going through a lot in transition. You know, people who work at the county are well aware of that. Um, we're trying to keep up with everything as best we can. That's no great comfort to anybody who's putting in long hours, handling a caseload, their caseload and the ca half the caseload of the person who just left. Um, I just want you to know we know that and we appreciate that. And it doesn't change the needs of the citizens who are in crisis and who come to you and ask you to do your job and do your job more than you should have to. Uh, it doesn't make it any easier. But I just want you to know that we are sitting here on County Council well aware of the challenges that you're facing. Um, I sit on the board of, of one of our service providers, Child Guidance Resource Centers. and the same kinds of challenges are facing your providers. And we're aware of that too, which makes it hard for all of our employees to, to find people to provide the services. But they're working at it. All of our employees are working at it and I think have been doing really a remarkable job. It's not gonna be easy when people are upset and when people are dealing with what they're dealing with um, to lose programs to lose a key provider of services to a family member who is struggling with whether it's a permanent disability, whether it is a substance use disorder, whether it is um, you know, a transient episode. All of those things are points of crisis and we seem to have had more than our share. But what I've seen is that the employees of Delaware County and the providers of Delaware County and the people who live here really do come together. And we're doing what we can do and we're gonna keep at it. And we're gonna put the money to work and we're gonna find the people. It just may take some time, but um, all of you, I hope you know that those of you who provide the services are appreciated and those of you who need the services are respected and we appreciate what your needs are and are gonna do our best to make sure that we meet those needs. So thank you to everybody and thank you for this presentation on the block grant.